an absolutely perfect day to be barbecue, and we're playing uh, Rain by uh, Blue Radio there, and it is raining a little bit. Lots of people barbecue in the rain, but this is the time of year when the sun's out, it's warming up. I'm joined by Captain Jonathan Gormick to talk about barbecue safety. These can, well, there's a fire in here, so these can be a hazard, right, Captain? Absolutely. There's a fire, there's a ton of fuel and a ton of energy stored nearby, but uh, barbecues are designed really safely. We don't have a lot of barbecue fires every year. Regrettably, the ones we do have uh, cause significant amounts of damage, but a few quick tips will keep everyone safe. What's the main source of, the, of uh, fires, like home fires and things like that from barbecues? Barbecues, it's uh, either leaking propane, leaking connection, mm -hmm. or just a buildup of grease and debris within the barbecue that finally gets hot enough to, uh, to catch fire. And even if you turn off the propane source, the fire keeps going because that grease is built up for months or maybe even years. Yeah. Okay, let's start by talking about the connections. Yeah. Before you start every year, a good, good time to look at the propane cylinder. Just make sure it's in good condition. Uh, we wouldn't expect consumers to look at the hydrostatic test date, uh, but when they take it for a fill, the, the person at the station will check that. Just look to see if it's got any rust, any debris. Uh, if it looks to you like it's uh, suitable for holding a pressurized flammable yeah. gas. If it passes the check test, um, then it's time to connect it to the hose. Just make sure you're threading it properly. You don't uh, cross thread or meet any, any excessive resistance. Turn on the propane and then you can take a mixture of soap and water, form a little bit of a froth with it, some bubbles, and put it on the connections. If there's so any we're putting that on the connections, on the hose, all the way up into uh, where that hose meets the flames coming out, correct? Yeah, I mean, the biggest place you'll see leaks is around the connection if it's not tight enough or if you've cross-threaded. So um, put the soapy water on there, watch for any bubbles. If bubbles start to uh, multiply, then it's a, there's a good chance there's a leak. Shut off the propane, maybe try the connection again. If not, it's time to replace some of the parts. And these hoses can deteriorate. I personally had a barbecue fire where the hose did deteriorate and flames were coming out of the panel because there was a leak in the hose. It was absolutely terrifying, as you can imagine. Yeah. But if something like that does happen Exactly. Good idea to have a fire extinguisher. And you know what? Back. Checking for good condition doesn't just apply to the cylinder. It applies to the barbecue as well. So before you light it, look at the hose. Is it cracked? Is it deteriorated? Look inside. Are all the parts there? Are they rusted out? Is it time to clean the barbecue or, or replace some of the parts or replace the unit in general? But like you said, having an extinguisher nearby is a great idea in the kitchen and as well as the barbecue and having the training to do it. And uh, Vancouver Fire offers a very uh, inexpensive training for anyone that wants to learn how to use a fire extinguisher safely. Now, our barbecue is pretty clean here. It's relatively new, but that's mm. not always the case. When we get these barbecues ready to go for the season, there's often a buildup of grease, and that can ignite. That's right. Uh, if you're cooking greasy foods, which is basically any meat, that yeah. grease drips off, and it cools on the sides, but builds and builds and builds. And if you're not careful and don't clean it, that's what can cause minor flare-ups uh, um, in a small case. But uh, if it gets bad, it's a huge flare-up that you can't put out because you can't turn off the fuel source. It's built sure, up on the inside. Sure, because it's already in there. Right. Now, these things throw a lot of heat. Uh, a lot Lots of people have barbecues on their small balconies, on their patios, and they get them too close to the house. What happens then? Well, uh, the least uh, damage we see is melted siding. That's in a good case. In bad cases, we see wooden siding and things like that catch on fire, or if it's under an awning, that kind of thing catch on fire. So they should be 10 feet or three meters from any combustible surface. Check with your strata if, you work, if you're in an apartment building and whether you're allowed them on the balcony, but keep them well away from anything that could be uh, affected by large amounts of heat. What about the circulation of air? You know, these are meant to be outside. We shouldn't be barbecuing in too enclosed of a space. That's right. Uh, outside, definitely. Never, ever bring a hibachi or anything fuel-powered that's not designed to be inside, indoors. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, less about ventilation, more about carbon monoxide buildup. Oh, interesting. Um, you know, if you bring this inside, they generate large amounts of carbon monoxide. If you don't have an alarm, that could quickly become a fatal situation. Okay, now uh, we're talking about sparking the barbecue. Most barbecues have an automatic igniter, but these things fail pretty readily. So where do we go once our igniter goes down? You're right. When those stop working, because these see some pretty harsh conditions, they're left outside of other winter components rust. Uh, one of these long-handled lighters is a great way to keep your hands away, get the ignition source close to the fuel inside by the grill, um, and then you're not sticking your hand down under, which uh, is, is not particularly dangerous, but can be a bit of a scary experience when you get that final whoomph when it starts. And, and what about starting up the barbecue? Uh, we want to get the gas uh, flowing out of the burners, but uh, 
we don't want to have this thing closed down, the lid closed down when we started. Is That's that right. Correct? You need a good mixture of, of air and the propane to start. So open the lid, turn on the gas, try to start it. If it doesn't start in a few seconds, turn off the gas, let the propane clear out and try again. Um, if you can't seem to light it after multiple attempts, it might be time to have the barbecue serviced or replaced. Excellent. Thanks so much, Captain. Great tips. I'm ready to start grilling. <laughs> Did you bring any meat? <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Now we're going to check in with Greg.